of good and evil that was in the midst of the garden and warned them that the day they, they, they did what? They ate of it, what would happen? They would surely die. You know, the, the, the issue about death, why, why you say you surely die? Because what, what happens when we die? What happens to us in God? And, and not just God, but everybody else. What happens to us when we die? It what? It separates us. It separates us from our loved ones here on earth, and it also separates us from, from who? From God. And, and that God said to us about that, what he says, what? I take no pleasure in the what? In the death of the wicked. God doesn't want us to die. And that's why he told Adam and Eve, don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But you know, uh, a little serpent came along the way. And uh, unfortunately, man uh, kind of listened to God, didn't listen to God continually. Uh, we say at the behest of the devil, mankind would eventually demonstrate a callous disregard and disdain for God's law by doing exactly the opposite of what God told him to do. He did what? He did take up the, 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 the fruit of the tree of knowledge and Eden. And they did what? They did eat. And what, what the, 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 uh, can God lie? What happened to them when they ate? Yes, but God told them that the day they eat, what would happen? They would die and, and die they what? They die they did. Now when, when the moment they ate the fruit, they did die instantaneously. But that death wasn't the physical part. What died instantaneously was the spiritual. Because you remember what happened when, when they sinned. What, 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 what did they instantaneously become a, a, a mindful of? Of their what? Their nakedness. And what did they seek to do? They took what? Fig leaves and did what? Seek to cover themselves. So your, your nakedness is symbolic of what? Of unrighteousness and, and of a rebellion against God. So what we said, what were the consequences of, 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 uh, of disobedience to God's law? Ye shall what? Ye shall surely die. It was as God told them the day that they, they would die. So, so we said they died uh, immediately spiritually and then subsequently what? Physically. Yes, you know, in our mind's eye, we hear when we read the Bible that Adam and Eve and, and many of those people back then lived for what? Hundreds of years. But, you know, when you compare hundreds of years to what? To eternity, which would you take in your little wisdom? If you had to choose uh, 900 years and eternity, what, what, what's the deal? What are you going to do? Eternity. 900 years pales in comparison to what? Eternity. And so, so because remember what God said about a thousand years. What did he say about a thousand years? It's as if it's not like a day. You know, we, we think that 900 years, oh, that was a long time ago. But 900 dead years in God's sight is only but a day. It's an evening passed by quick, quick, and it's gone. But in our minds, it seems like a long time. But as, as God was saying, they died spiritually, instantaneously, and subsequently they died in the due process of time. So what uh, was God unprepared for man's fall, or did he anticipate it? You think God was caught unaware, unprepared for man's transgression? Okay. How do we know that, that God was, uh, was prepared? Because what, what, what do we know? What do we know? We know that what? The Bible says that before the what? Before the foundations of the world was formed. God had a what? God had a plan. And so I would encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, when you're looking for a man, get a man with a what? A plan. If God had a plan, 
you need a man with a plan. A man without a plan is what? He's no man at all. If he's not going anywhere, if he's not doing anything, depart from him. Because a man is a man if he has a plan. To get you somewhere. Ladies, that's what you need to keep in mind. Get a man with a plan. So what a who and uh, what was central? Because the Bible says in, in Ephesians chapter one, how we know that, verse four, he said that before the foundation of the world was laid, God foresaw what would happen. And he had a plan. And what was that plan? To redeem mankind. And the basis of his redemption was what? His love for men. Oh, love of God, how rich and pure. How measureless and strong. It shall what? It shall forever more endure the saints and the angel song. The love of God is the, 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 the basis that uh, uh, caused God to develop a plan. Because uh, as uh, the songwriter said when he was on the cross, that he could have done what? He could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set himself free. But he died alone for you and me because of his what? His love. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The love of God is why we're here today, ladies and gentlemen. Because for God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but what? So before the foundation of the world, God, because of God's love, he had a plan. And so that plan was to do what? What was the plan? You have no idea what the plan was? Yes, to redeem, but in more specific terms, God's plan was to do what? To send who? To send his son, Jesus Christ. Son of God, to become what? Son of man. Son of God to become son of man. And the songwriter says it this way. He left the what? The splendor of heaven. Knowing what? Knowing his destiny was what? The, the palaces? No, what? The lonely hills of what? Golgotha. There to lay down his life from you and me. And he, the songwriter goes on to say that. If that isn't love... Then what? Then heaven's a myth. There's no feeling like this if that isn't love. Oh, love of God, how rich and pure. So God had a plan, and his plan was to send his son, Jesus Christ, to come to be the, uh, uh, the, the, to pay the price, the penalty for our sin. Because the reality of life is that there are no free rides. If you sin, the Bible said, the day you die, you sin. You shall what? You shall surely die. You're going to die unless, but for the what? But for the grace and the mercy of God. The grace of God is what? What is the grace of God? That he, uh, 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 he died on the cross and shed his blood. And his uh, sacrifice, his atonement is what? Is what saved us. The songwriter goes on saying, and Calvary does what? covers it all. My guilt and his shame, Jesus bore it all, and Calvary covers it all. Though your sins be as what? Scarlet. I'll make them as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall will be as wool. Because Calvary, God shed blood. His atoning sacrifice is what covers it all. And the reality is that no potentate, no strong man, no rich man, no fast-talking man could have done what Christ did because the Bible says that it took one who was what? Equal with God to pay the penalty for our transgression. Oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It took God himself to pay the price for our sins and praise God. He, in the due course of time, Jesus did what? He did come and he paid the price for our sins. So is there anything else that is important, an important element of the plan of salvation that we should take note of? Is there anything else besides, because we're going to read, we actually did read, uh, 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 Sister Pope read 
our uh, scripture reading. And if you recall in the scripture reading in the second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17 through uh, 21, he mentioned in there that, that God gave us the what? The ministry of what? Reconciliation. And we say central ministry of recon reconciliation is who? God in the form of who? Jesus Christ. He is. Jesus, the songwriter goes on to say, is the center of what? My joy. He is the center of our universe because he is the one who is center, central to up the plan of salvation. The, the fact that he left the splendor of heaven, knowing his destiny was the lonely hills of Golgotha, yet he came down and laid down his life for us. And because he lives, I can what? I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds tomorrow. And life is what? Worth the living just because he lives. But when, but, but Christ is the center of the plan of salvation. But he has done something else also. He said that he has, Jesus has enlisted fallen and imperfect human beings who have accepted him as their personal savior from sin to aid him in his ministry of reconciliation and redemption. For those who have not yet accepted the plan of salvation and claim the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ as a propitiation or the atoning sacrifice of their sin. So God has, once you accept Jesus Christ as your, save, as your, your savior, he then calls you to become what? Fishers of men. Go tell it on the mountain. Where? Over the hills and where? And everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that what? That Jesus Christ not simply was born, but is died, resurrected, and what? And coming again. Lift up the trumpet. Now let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Coming in glory. The what? The lamb that was slain. Jesus is coming again. That is the good news that God has chosen to, 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 to enlist imperfect people into that, uh, that plan of salvation to, to, to engage us in the process of saving our fellow human beings. Once we have accepted Jesus as our personal savior from sin, we automatically uh, are called by God himself to be co-laborers with him in his ministry of reconciliation and redemption of our fellow human beings. So what is it that I hope to accomplish this morning as I share with you the word of God? It is my sincere prayer as you listen to this message, what God has to say to you that you will first and foremost accept Jesus Christ as your, our personal savior from sin, as your personal savior. As my personal team. It, because if you have not done that yet, you have not met the first criteria. That is the first step. Come unto me, all ye that are labor and heavy laden, and what? And I will give you rest. Rest that the world can't give you. Oh, yes, they'll invite you to the party and all that stuff. But when the music stops, it's over. That you will still be restless, still looking for a way out of, out of no way. But he said, come unto me and I will give you rest. Rest that the world can't give. Praise be to God. God will give you rest. Secondly, once you have uh, accepted him as your personal savior, he, he gives us a commission. In Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20, what is that commission? He says what? Go ye therefore what? And teach all nations what? Baptized in them what? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Go and lo what? Lo, I will what? I am with you all the way, even to what? The end of the world. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. And praise be to God. Uh, our, 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 this our task, once you and I come into church, is not just to have potlucks. And just say, oh, you know, what's happening after church? Oh, we're going to have dinner. That's not what it's about. 
It is to go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's what it's all about. So we have to get, if we find ourselves always just sitting at home and say, oh yeah, didn't we have a good time and we go home now? That's not what it's all about. We say, go ye therefore and teach all nations. So that when you, you go to work and you see people there who are, uh, who are uh, experiencing Christ's grace, have no knowledge of, of the fact all they're concerned about is what the party tonight. Oh, what's happening Saturday night? Oh, the big party next to you over the, uh, over the Joneses. Or somewhere else. That's all they seem to be concerned with. The things of this world. That will soon dim in what? Lose their values. When we recall that they're what? They're only borrowed for a while. But we know. That the things of this world. Will soon perish. And that the day is coming. When God's heavens. Will open wide. And all who love the Lord. Will what? Will enter in. But he is coming for what kind of people? A prepared people. Those who say, who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and do what? And seek my face and do what? And turn from their wicked way. If my people who are called by my name. So God is uh, looking for a prepared people. People who are called by, by his right name. Sons of God. Children of God, Christian, and somebody says, I want to be a follower of Christ. I want to be what? I want to be one of his disciples. I want to be a follower of Christ. Why do you want to be a follower of Christ? Because he said, I am the way, the what? The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So this morning, some people want to be followers of uh, 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 what's her name now with the, the big music thing, uh, Taylor, uh, Taylor Swift. And some other people want to be followers of, you know, all the other popular, uh, popular uh, uh, people in, in Hollywood and what have you. But today, if you understand the importance of what we're talking about, today you want to be a follower of Christ. Because he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. He is the man, only way for us to be out of the sin curse world. Because if you are not paying attention, if you're not paying attention to what's going on with climate change and all that's happening around us, that this world inevitably will do what? Will be destroyed by, by virtue of the way man has channeled the earth. I mean, you can't say, you're, oh, you know, I'm asleep and I don't see what's happening with climate change. What do you think these people are trying to do when they try to go to the moon? You think it's just to go explore the moon, have a good time? Oh, so they recognize this earth is going down. And people are trying to find a way to escape off of this earth. But, 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 but we hear the song says that there's no what? There's no hiding place down here. You know, and the only hope we have of escape is in who? Is in Jesus Christ. Somehow people believe that if they, you know, build some space trap and what have you, they can escape this world. There is no escape. The only hope we have is in Jesus. So, as I say this morning, this sin-cursed world is destined for complete and utter destruction. There is no way of escape, but only, our only hope is in Jesus. To come join the army of God and agree to become co-laborers with Jesus in his ministry of reconciliation and redemption that's what imperfect people God has offering, offering to each one of us as imperfect people. So God's ministry of reconciliation and redemption shared is shared with fallen men. As I said, God didn't have to do that. He could have used the rocks and the mountain. But he could have used the angels. But God chose a fallen, imperfect human being to be co-laborers together with him in his ministry of reconciliation. Now, what is this ministry of reconciliation all about? What's that all about? We use the so-called fancy term. But what does it really mean? God, God is seeking to do what? Bring us back into fellowship with him right now. We see what happened, what do you call there, with uh, Moses when he went up to the thing there. The brightness of, of God's appearance almost what? We remember when Moses went to meet God, he told him to do what? 
Take off what? Take off thy shoes for the place thou stand is what? Holy ground. And so that we say when we come into the presence of God, it is but by the mercy of God that we are not what? We're not consumed because light and darkness cannot what? Cannot inhabit the same space. Truth and error can't be in the same place. You know, so God has uh, uh, making a way of escape for us to be reconciled to him so that there will be no division. There won't be this chasm that exists now between man and God. We are separated physically and spiritually from God right now. And this message of reconciliation that he's giving to us is giving it to us a way that man can be brought back into harmony with God because of sin. And the songwriter goes on to say that what sin has done what? Left a crimson stain. But praise be to God, he can wash it white as what? As snow. Praise be to God, his blood covers it all and washes white as snow. So what is God's ministry of reconciliation? I just told you. Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So, so we said step one was to, to do what? The first thing that we have to do in the ministry of reconciliation, we first have to do what? Accept Jesus Christ as our personal savior from sin. And so I asked this morning, on the, everyone on the sound of my voice, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior from sin? And if it's not, the do doors of the church are open right now. And he say, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Though your sins be as scarlet, I'll do what? I'll make them as white as snow. Even now, he's calling. Even now, his spirit is drawing. Don't delay. Just obey. Even now, Jesus is calling. The songwriter goes on to say, hark, the voice of Jesus doing what? Calling. Who will come and work today? He is all right. The harvest waiting. Who will bear the seeds today? Jesus is calling you right now to accept, to come join his army, to become part of his ministry of reconciliation. And once you do that, that's where you start to become part of God's great plan of reconciliation. Is there someone today, this morning, who, would, who has not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior from sin? We say, if you, you, uh, you, you are here under the sound of my voice, feel free to come now or at the end of the service to accept Jesus as your personal savior from sin. So, uh, yes, so once we uh, have accepted him, he then becomes, uh, 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 we become ambassadors. We read it back in, in 2 Corinthians uh, 5, verse 21. We said that God has given us the ministry of reconciliation and he then gives us what? Calls us to be what? Ambassadors, ambassadors for him. Ambassadors to do what? To go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and what? And everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ, not simply born, but died and rose again. And he's coming. And he declared that I have the keys of life, death. And, and, and say, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds tomorrow, and life is worth the living just because he lives. You know, all of us, uh, more often than not, have gone to a funeral, have we not? And when we go to the funeral, somehow it seems like it's the end of the road. But praise be to God, the songwriter says to us who have uh, accepted Jesus Christ as our personal savior from sin. He said, we have this hope that does what? Burns within our heart. Hope in the coming of the Lord. That death is not the what? That the end of all things. Because he said, I am the, the, the resurrection and the life. Though ye were what? Dead. Yet shall he what? Yet shall he live. So we have this hope that burns within our hearts. Hope in the coming of the Lord.
So yes, uh, yes, God has called us to this ministry of reconciliation. So Christ's message to each of us have, uh, who have uh, become chosen to become ambassadors of eternal life is the following. And we read it in Matthew 28, verse 3. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Go uh, 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 baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe whatsoever I have commanded you. And he's promised what? Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And the songwriter, you know, uh, 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 echoes it in a way that helps us to crystal, crystallize in a way that, that makes it. He says, so send out you to labor unrewarded, to serve unpaid, unloved, unsought, unknown, to bear rebuke, to suffer scorn and scoffing. So send I you to suffer for my sake. Because that's what God did. He suffered on the cross for our sake. And he says, as the Father has what? Sent me. So what? So send I you. God is calling even now. He is calling. Is there someone among us that have not already, or even right now, as we said, made a, a, a desirous of becoming an ambassador and collaborate with Jesus? Perhaps you've accepted uh, his message and, and, and become a child of God. But you're not out there uh, 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 sharing in the way you know you should. And he said, the what heart, the voice of Jesus calling. The fields are what? Right. The harvest what? Waiting. Who will go come and work today? And, and unfortunately, you know, we, we know the story. That somebody called out for a what? A party. What happened? How many people signed up for the party? Oh, just about everybody. Somebody says, let's go distribute some literature. Let's go work for God. What do we see? Two and three. Two and three. It somehow is not as much fun and exciting going out sharing the message as it is to seem how to go to party. But somehow God says that those are the things that have true value and lasting uh, uh, value, not the short-term thing. He said that's what the devil seeks to do. He short, seeks to blind us with the short-term thing, the things of this world. But he, the songwriter goes and says, they will soon dim and what? And lose their value when we recall that they're only borrowed for what? But the things of God will endure for time and for eternity. So who does God use for his ministry of reconciliation and redemption? Who is it that God? So we say God uses ordinary people. Does he not? He uses people who are willing to what? To be called by his name. And, and, and guess what happened? They don't require any PhD. They don't require you to have an advanced degree. I mean, if you didn't even make it to high school, I dare say if you didn't even make it to first grade, God can still use you. In fact, God can use who what? He can use who? Anybody. And not just anybody, but what? But everybody. Who are, who are, who are what? Willing to be used by God. Yes, yes. So we say God uses what kind of people? Ordinary people. As, 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 uh, and and uh, one of the evidences we have of it was the 12 people that he called to be his disciples. What kind of people were they? Were they the, 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 the uh, highly uh, uh, in the church or in society? They were what? They were just ordinary fishermen. Ordinary people. That's who God called to be, uh, to be his instrument. So praise be to God. Yes, God uses ordinary people. But there's another set of people he uses. And those are the ones that we mentioned today. God also uses what kind of people? Imperfect people. Now, who is that? We remember who we talked about? Who are the imperfect people? Okay. Why are we all imperfect? Because all of what? All have sinned and come how short? A little short? You mean just a, just a small kid? But what? How short? Very short. So short that the, 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 so the uh, uh, saying goes that our hands are too what? Too short to box with God. You can't reach up to heaven. You, 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 just too, you can't make it. We need a what? We need a savior. And praise be to God, a songwriter says, I have a savior. He's waiting in heaven. For you, I am praying. 
For you, I am praying. For you, I am praying. I'm praying for you. God has given us a Savior. And he says to us in John 3.16 that what? For God so what? That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever what? Should what? Should not perish but what? Have everlasting life. Praise be to God. God has sent his son. They call him Jesus. He came and to, to earth to what? Live and die. He, he lived and died to do what? To buy our pardon. An empty grave is what? Is there to prove my savior lives. Praise be to God. God has given us a way of escape out of the sin curse world. And so we say, yes, God uses imperfect people. Yes, no individual can be denoted as perfect. Flawless or unequivocally without fault. For the word of God has declared in Romans chapter uh, 3, verse 23, that what? All have sinned and come short of glory of God. All humans are imperfect. Christianity is not reserved for the worthy, nor does God limit his relationship to only the spiritually pious. The person walking around like they ain't nothing but heaven. We live in a real world and we work with strength. God is looking for imperfect people. What, 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 why, 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 why God would, why, why would God just focus on the imperfect people? Why, 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 why not? Why not about the perfect people? What about them? Oh, oh, th th there are no perfect people. What happened to them? When Adam and Eve sinned, that was what? That was the end of the perfect people. Everybody who sins come since Adam and Eve are what? Imperfect people. But praise be to God. He says to us that. What does he say about God? God uses what? Ordinary and what? And imperfect people. And that's you and I. And so that's why we're here today because God uses ordinary and imperfect people. So let me, just in case you're, you're not convinced by it, I can let me tell you a, a few examples of uh, some imperfect people that God used. The one that I, uh, I want to tell you about, his name is Joseph. You ever heard about Joseph? He was an imperfect. Now, we, we, when we hear the story of Joseph, we oftentimes think that, oh, Joseph was a good guy. And he was what? And in, 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 in a lot of sense, he was a good guy. But we just said, I just heard somebody say that everybody who's sin come since some Adam and Eve have done what? Have sinned and come what? Very short and is an imperfect person. So we know by definition that Joseph was what? Was not a perfect person. That he had, he came from what's called a dysfunctional family. You know why he came from a dysfunctional family? Because his father, whose name is Jacob, had several wives. And he, he had how many sons? He had 12 sons. And, um, and what happened was that uh, because he had several wives and he loved one of his wives more than the other. Now, what, what was her name? Rachel. Rachel had how many sons? Two, that be who? Benjamin and Joseph. And all his sons. So, you know, one day his father to exhibit his love for his son, because uh, just uh, just a little tidbit, so you know about in ancient times, what was the practice in the ancient times was that the the father used to show favoritism to the oldest son. But guess who was the oldest son? Reuben was the oldest son, not Joseph. But because Jacob loved. Rachel more than he did his other wives, and Joseph was the oldest son of Rachel, Joseph became his what? His favorite. And so what he did to demonstrate his love for, 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 for uh, Joseph is what, what did he do? He bought him a what? A coat of what? Many colors. Now what you have to understand about this so-called coat of many colors is that back in the day, it was very, very expensive to make a coat of many colors. A coat of many colors was reserved for kings and dignitaries. It wasn't for the ordinary people. And these, these were Joseph's brothers and so forth, were ordinary people. What did they do for a living? They did what? They tended to sheep in the, in the pasture. And so 
His father bought him a coat of many colors and to demonstrate his love for him. And now, 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 just going back to the word we used before. He was, he was his son's, he was his father's what? Favorite. Now, the word favorite has another word associated with favorite. And what that word is what? Favorite, but you said favorite, but it has an ism to it. What, what's that word called? What's the word? Favoritism. You know, favorite is a very positive word, but when you switch it to the word favoritism, what, what happens all of a sudden? Very negative connotation because that's why we mentioned before that he came from what kind of home? A dysfunctional home. Has anybody grown up, grown up in a house where uh, uh, with other siblings and the parents uh, exhibited favoritism? Has anybody know about that? Praise be to God. Now, 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 I'm not saying praise be God because you grew up in it, but we know the consequence of it. That home is what kind of home? What do we call it? A dysfunctional home. Because when we show favoritism over one person, what's it going to lead to? It's going to start, it's going to lead to a word called J. Start with a J. Jealousy. And jealousy leads to other issues. Jealousy leads to what? To hurt. And to what? Another H word. To harm. So when, so one day, the father gave Joseph this coat of many colors and sent him out into the fields to go check upon his brother. Because Jacob had made Joseph sort of like the overseer. And so what do you think? What do you think were the dynamics between Joseph and his other brother? Do you think they loved him to see him coming in his favorite coat of many colors? Because what, what did that coat symbolize? The favoritism that his father displayed towards Joseph. And you think they loved to know that he was the favorite, even though he wasn't the oldest? They, they what? They did what? They despised him and to the point of what? Hatred. How do we know that they hate, that he got to the point of, of, of hatred? Because what did they do, attempt to do when he came out there with his coat of many colors? They plotted to do what? They plotted to kill him. And so they did. They plotted to kill him. And who tried to save him? Reuben. Reuben, the oldest brother, tried to save him. Because part of the story goes with that. Had they killed him, being, Reuben being the oldest one would have taken the, the, the hit for what had happened to his brother, even though it was not his idea uh, to, to kill him. So uh, Reuben dissuaded them from doing it and told them, oh, you know, uh, 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 put him in a pit and, and, and let him stay there. And Reuben's plan was to come back and get him sometime after they were gone. But while they were, he was in the pit, apparently Reuben stepped away. And while he was there, who passed by? A marauding groups of traders from, uh, on their way from Canaan to Egypt. And what did they, a light bulb went off in one of their, the brothers' uh, mind. The brother's name was Judah. You know what he said to them? Oh, suck, instead of killing him, let's make money. Let's make money off him. So they sold him uh, to, to, the, to these things into what? Sold him into what? Slavery. And he, uh, uh, they sold him into slavery. And, and, and when they went back home, they made up a story that what? A wild goat had killed him. And his, brother, his father cried and weeped to no end. But we know the end story. That what, what, what happened to, to, to eventually happen to, to Joseph when he went to Egypt? He was, yes, yes, he, he did incur some difficulty. He did go to prison. And he did suffer harm. And, and we recall part of his wife, what she do try to do to him. Try to, try to you know, uh, accuse him of, 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 of coming after her and, and all that. So he suffered difficulties. But eventually, God did what to him? Promoted him to what? What's called vice regent. Or as would be said, the second in command to who? The Pharaoh. And so we see that, yes, Joseph, who came from a dysfunctional family, who had hatred between him and his brother. And, and we, we don't abscond, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, obfuscate Joseph for all that he did. Because, yes, 
Joseph should have recognized that his father was, uh, was displaying favoritism towards him and seek to ameliorate the situation, making it dull. But he came out there in, his, in, in the, the coat of many colors, wore it bright and early that morning, came out his coat of many colors, and he, he, didn't, uh, uh, he didn't show sympathy and empathy for the plight of his brother. So that was his mistake, that was his flaw. That when we see others who are suffering, God expects us to do what? To be compassionate, to be compassionate toward those who, not, it wasn't his fault that his father uh, displayed uh, 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 favoritism towards him, but he had a responsibility to, to mitigate that damage that was being done by not trying to lord it over his brother, by not going around boasting and showing off his coat of many colors. But he did that, and that was to his downfall because, because he went out there that day and did that. His brothers plotted to kill him. And when it didn't happen, they sold him into slavery. So there's a warning to each one of us. In purpose, we be. We ought to be uh, uh, humble, uh, even in the midst of when uh, somebody else is doing uh, wrong and we didn't perpetrate it. God still expects us to, 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 uh, to, to be compassionate, as the word was said. To be compassionate. Yes. So, so yes, as we said that. But it was God's plan all along because God then used Joseph to do what? To, to save the children of Israel from famine and starvation. So when he finally met back up with his brother, he said to his brother, look, it, I know what you did. He forgave them and told them that, that it was God's plan that, that, that brought them there to this moment. And that so we see that even from a person coming from a dysfunctional home, it is no secret what God can do can do. Even for people coming from a dysfunctional home, God can use imperfect people like Joseph. Another one that I would bring quickly to your attention is, uh, is Moses. You know, Moses, uh, we know the story of Moses. He, he, he what? He, 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 was in, he was born of a, of a what? An Israelite uh, uh, a mother and was a uh, in uh, and, and somehow she put him in a in a in a in a, in a, in a basket, and somehow he's then uh, found to be uh, with with the with the, uh, the the daughter of Pharaoh, and she took him in and raised him as his as her own, and to the point that he was in line to become the what the next Pharaoh. But Joe, uh, Moses did not forget his past. He knew where he came from, that he, that he was, a, a, he was an Israelite. And one day, he went back to look for his people. And what did he see? He saw an Egyptian doing what? Mistreating one of his people. And he got angry and did what? He killed him. So, you know, we see that Joseph, Moses was a what? A murderer. A murderer. <laughs> and, 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 and to the point that he was eventually then what? Run out of town. Because, he, uh, because not simply because of his murder, but because he displayed a, 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 a hatred for the Egyptian people and he could not be the next pharaoh. But God eventually uh, sought to use this murderous individual to do what? To lead his people out of what? Out of Egypt. And at the point that he sought to use him, Moses had, had a, a physical impediment. Remember what that was? He, he was a stutterer. You know anybody who stuttered? The, 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 oh yeah, the. it's a terrible thing and it's, it's very embarrassing. It's a physical impediment and we shouldn't laugh about it. But it's a physical impediment that he had. And it, so we see that Joseph wasn't perfect. And Moses was what? As well, imperfect. He was a murderer and a, had a physical impediment called stuttering. But yet, in spite of his imperfection, God was able to use Moses to do what? To lead the children of Israel out of, the, out of, out of Egypt and into and, and next, close to the promised land. So yes, so we, we say, it is no secret what? What God can do. What he has done for others, you are. He'll do for you.
Now, now you know, I, I could tell you a, a, a few more, but, uh, you know, but I could tell you about, uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you a little about, about this one because I think it's important. And then I'm going to skip the other one. I'll tell you about Rahab. Anybody heard about Rahab? Who was it, Rahab? And what, what, was she, what was her claim to fame? She was a prostitute. Uh, uh, in, our, in our society, uh, where on the totem poles are, are prostitutes? Where on the to totem pole are they? Somewhere down the bottom, the bo that's called the bottom of the barrel. And notwithstanding her lowly estate, God was able to use Rahab. And what we know is that Rahab, God used Rahab to say, to, to help uh, the children of Israel when they're seeking to take over uh, the, the, the Canaan land. And because of her faithfulness, even though she came from a pagan land, Canaan at that time was a pagan land who worshiped uh, adulter, uh, idolaters. They didn't worship the true and living God. But uh, uh, Rahab believed in God. And because of her, uh, her belief, it was counted onto her for what? Righteousness. And so we see the vilest offender who what? Who true believes what? That moment from Jesus, a pardon with him. And the songwriter said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we see, and, and what you need to know about Rahab is that she became a part of the lineage of who? Of Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth, she became part of his lineage. And so, again, we see it is no secret what God can do. Though your sins be as scarlet, I'll make them as white as Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So, I, I, because of time, I'm not going to tell you any more of, of the other ones. But let, let it be known. There are plenty of others. I could have told you about Abraham. I could have told you about Elijah, Jacob, Job, Gideon, Peter, all these people, all imperfect. There's one more I got to tell you. But guess who this person is? He's not in the Bible. It's a very recent person. In fact, that person came to our church. And he is the, 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 he's the grandson of a former president of our conference. Elder Van, Mead Van Putten. Now his name, I don't recall, but his mother, who was the president's uh, daughter, Dalla Van Putten, she got married, and I forget what the last name is. I went to school with her at Oakwood. And uh, what happened with him is that, as many kids do, he, he fell off the way in terms of, uh, of, of what uh, his parents his father was a pastor. His mother, uh, like I said, the, the, the daughter of the president of the conference. And what did he do? He got involved in, in, in with the wrong crowd. He ended up in jail. And uh, he came here and told us the story. Praise be to God. He finally was able to turn his life around. And so he is another uh, a person in the chain of link to show that there is, is no secret what God can do. What he has done for others, he'll do for you. I don't know what your story is, but we all know that each one of us in here have a what? Have a story. Have some imperfection. What your problem is, I don't, but who knows? God knows your story. And he's saying that it is no secret what God can do. What he's done for all these people, he can do for who? For you and for me. He said, with arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. And so, why does God use imperfect people? He says that there are no perfect people. So all that God has is you and me. And so he, he's calling us, imperfect as we are. Imperfect as we are, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor, and what? And are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. God is calling us today to be part of him. He said, for he said, for my strength is what? Is made perfect in what? In weakness. So when I am weak, then I am strong. 
it is one of our weakest moments because when we weak, we are weak, we recognize that what? We can't do it. We need God. And the songwriter goes on and says that what? People need what? They need the Lord. At the end of broken dream, he's the open door. People need the Lord. When will we realize that people need the Lord? And he's calling each one of us today, imperfect as we are, that he, that, that he said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Praise be to God. He's calling each one of us this morning. And say, maybe you've been through a divorce. Perhaps you've been through a divorce. A weekly event, no question about it. But to eventually find healing, God can and will use you to minister to other experiencing the heartbreak of a divorce. Perhaps you're struggling with addiction. But God has or is going to lead you through recovery so he can hold you up to friends struggling with doubt as an example of how he can bring supernatural healing to a person's life. Perhaps you're suffering from some type of depression. God can take away your depression and then use you to show others how he can help them to overcome their depression. For it is no secret what God can do. For what he has done for others, he'll do for you with arms wide open. He'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. For God's strength, as we said, is made perfect in weakness. So there's a lot more I could tell you, ladies and gentlemen, but the hour is late and I'm looking to close now. Say, so, other reasons why uh, we should, uh, uh, God is calling upon imperfect people. Because if we were perfect, guess what happened? Guess what human nature is? We would seek to do what? Take credit for what God has done. But when he said, for my strength is made perfect in weakness, when we recognize that it was when the children of Israel were up against the, the, the Red Sea and had no way of escape, it was evident to everybody that who saved them? God and who? God alone. God and God alone. When we are facing our, our Goliaths, when we are facing the Red Seas in our lives, and we, we recognize that it's God and God alone that, that, that can save us, God gets all the praise and all the glory. And we get none because he is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun unto the going of the same, he's worthy. Jesus is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. So the tongue writer says what? Praise him. Praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. So I say to you this morning, imperfect people uh, must depend on God because of themselves, they can do nothing. Uh, we think this morning, as we prepare to close, of the experience of uh, David. You know, remember what happened to David, right? David was king of Israel. And he, there was in war one day. day. And, and while he was at war, what did he do? He saw a beautiful woman sitting on top of a building. And, you know, too busy to be constant, should have been focusing on the things of the war. No, he got caught, uh, uh, caught a glimpse of her. And he sent one of his servants for her. And he engaged in an idolatrous and adulterous relationship with this woman. And eventually she became pregnant. And she was married. When her husband came home from the war, he refused to engage in any sexual activity with her because he said, we are at war. How can I be doing this when we're at war? And eventually, to cover his transgression, he put uh, Bathsheba's husband in the what? In the thickest. He told Job, his, his, his general, to, to, to uh, put uh, uh, the husband in the thickest part of the war. And when the enemy approaches, what were they supposed to do? Draw back and leave him to his, to what? To, the, to them so that he would be killed. And he was what? And he was killed. And the Nathan the prophet came to, 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 to David and told him a story. And he 
came and, said, and he said to, uh, to David, thou art the man. You are the one who is guilty. And here's what David said. Have mercy upon me, O God. According to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgression. For my sins are ever before me. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be white. So yes, so to today, David the murderer is no somehow We've, we've forgotten about his murderous uh, behavior, his murderous action. And we, today, David is known as a man after God's own heart. For it is no secret what God can do. What he has done for others, he what? He'll do for you with arms wide open. He'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. And so as we close today, I say to you this morning, uh, perhaps you're feeling that uh, you're imperfect and God can't use you. But we're here to remind you that what? That God can use you because he has no other one. He, you're, we are his only hands. We're his only feet. He has no perfect people to use. And he's will. He said, him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast them. Though your sins be as car, I will make them white as snow. And so this morning as we close, here's what they saying to us. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, Lord, I'm the clay. Mold me and make me. Have thine own way. Have thine own way. Let's turn to that hymn. What is the hymn, hymn number? Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Let's all stand as we sing that song as we prepare to close this morning. Five, six, or seven. Have thine own way, Lord. Thou art the potter. I'm just the clay. Just the clay. Mold me and make me. Mold me after thy will. After thy will. While I am waiting. continue to uh, play. Let's bow our eyes this morning as we prepare to close out. Dear Jesus, help me, help us to see that you're a vessel for impacting the world around me, that I will never be perfect enough to represent you. And you don't need me to be, but help me to trust you with my weaknesses knowing you can use them for your great plan. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, this morning, as uh, the doors of the church open, if there are any imperfect people in here, 
and you hear the voice of God calling you this morning, hark the voice of Jesus call. He's calling you to, inviting you to come to him. He said, come unto me and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and I will give you rest. So God is calling you today. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart this morning. Even now he's calling, even now his spirit is drawing. Don't delay, just obey. Even now, Jesus is calling. Praise be to God. May God be with you as we uh, uh, prepare to dis uh, be dismissed. Believe his faith. You may have a seat.